is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2025 toyota crown signia courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because this thing is quite appealing it's an all-wheel drive hybrid SUV so it gives you excellent MPGs and you still got the all-wheel drive versatility there which is amazing and it's less expensive than the Lexus NX350 hybrid as well and it's a little bigger than that one as well so it's really a nice value proposition I guess in that sense but it also has the legendary crown name which might be not as legendary to us here in the US but it has been around for approximately 70 years in Japan so legendary for that particular reason but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2025 crown signia you got the xle starting at forty-three thousand five hundred and ninety dollars and then the limited being the one we are in today starting at forty seven thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant for the crown signia is going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with three electric motors putting out 240 horsepower 199 pound feet of torque power sent to all four wheels through an ec VT. As far as that zero to 60 time goes, it's going to come in at approximately seven seconds flat with MPG numbers coming in at 39 in the city, 37 on the highway for an all wheel drive SUV. That's incredible. Taking regular unleaded fuel to save you some money there too. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Crown Signia, I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. So there's a little toggle switch located directly behind the shifter. Drive modes will include eco, normal, sport, and custom, adjusting things like the shift points of throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now that i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 toyota crown signia here up to speed all right so there are actually paddle shifters i wanted to tell you guys that real quick there is a full manual shift mode just slide the shifter all the way directly to the back three two one go oh all right, it's decently quick. No issues emerging onto the highway, but I said all because I thought the paddle shifters were actually gonna feel like paddle shifters. I forgot this was an ECVT, so we're technically not shifting through anything. It's not like there's any gears there, but sometimes they stimulate automatics pretty well. Those are the more fun ones to drive, but as far as paddle shifters go, I probably wouldn't even use them here in the Crown Signia because they don't really do anything. But anyways, not that many people would be using the paddle shifters in an SUV like this. So anyways, just forget about the paddle shifters. The acceleration is bloody fine, but to go look at that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.5 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 116 feet, which is a brilliant number you guys as far as braking feel goes it's great definitely on the firm side of things instantly brings you to a stop the 116 foot number that's a sports sedan number typically in suvs you find kind of like mid 120s like 123 124 that's average so 116 feet that's a sports sedan you gotta love that it's an amazing brake if you on the crowd signia but Anyhow, then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been really really good my short little test drive here today now i will say hagerstown roads they're pretty darn good as well but um yeah absolutely no issues with ride quality it's been absorbing the road imperfections quite nicely so i love that as far as uh, cabin noise goes we're going 56 miles per hour right now so i'll let you guys be the judge you get a little bit of engine sound um going up a hill right now maybe you guys can tell through my road mic but other than that very little wind noise very little road noise so that's been perfectly on point as far as that uh, steering feel goes, I think it's kind of nice. It leads a little bit on the heavier side of things, but you know, it's not that too crazy. It's just, 
it feels right for what the crown signia is i will say that and it is a very noticeable difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in as well just put it back in sport driving mode is a much weightier feel to the steering so more like a sport sedan if you take it out of that sport driving mode like normal uh, that puts it back in basically a, an suv steering feel kind of mode so little something for everybody that's always a good thing i did want to also touch on going back to cabin noise real quick there's an acoustic laminated front windshield that does come standard and acoustic laminated front door glass so that's probably contributing to the very serene cabin that we have in this one and that's something that doesn't always come standard even on luxury automakers that front door glass very rarely comes standard even on luxury automakers so it's kind of cool seeing it on the crown signia but i guess this kind of is a luxury suv a luxury hybrid suv but anywho Touching our rear visibility and visibility in general, this is one that I really love because as far as rear visibility goes, it's fine. But when you switch the rear view mirror up, you got a rear camera mirror as well. And you might be asking, who cares? So if you're going on a road trip and you got a bunch of cargo kind of packed up in the cargo area and it's piled to the top, because sometimes it happens, especially if you have kids, the camera is on the outside of the vehicle. So you can still see what is behind you, even if the cargo area is piled up to the very top. So. Rear visibility is wonderful for that particular reason. I love that. And of course, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on our limited trim level that we have with us here today. So whenever the Crown Signia detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Toyota Crown Signia. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Toyota Crown Signia finished in oxygen white in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had with us on this one here but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the bin first character is the letter J indicating that the new 2025 crown signia is built and assembled in Japan as it should be that's pretty stinking cold but starting up front body colored mesh style front grille for both trim levels this is such a good looking front grille I always love the body colored front grills lately because that's something electric car started as far as the design element goes but it looks so dang good it's so much better than a black mesh front grille for example I love the body colored accents here but Anyways, both trims will get that. You got a gloss black front lip to the bottom there instead of a matte black front lip. So another very high end design element there. To the sides, full LED headlights do come standard, meaning both low beam and high beam. Get LED daytime running lights with that. You get the automatic feature. You get automatic high beams as well. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So you gotta love that. And with the limited that we have today you also get the auto leveling feature so that's pretty stinking cool as well but overall this is such a good looking front end that is one of the first things you notice when you first take a look at the crown signia in person it's such a good looking suv but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right and so Vanessa, we are around to the side of this one i just noticed this paint it's almost like a pearl paint finish so that looks pretty darn good but anyway starting up top low profile roof rails do come standard got the chrome belt line molding coming standard as well floating roof line in the back separating the uh the roof from the rest of the body there i think one of the more puzzling elements for me on the crowd signia is the fact that there's no rear privacy glass that comes standard so this is an suv after all at least i consider it an suv so i would expect to see rear privacy glass heck even on wagons you see rear privacy glass so i'm not sure why toyota um, opted to leave that out i'd probably go and get the windows tinted in the back myself if i were to get this one but maybe that's just me but power adjustable heated side mirrors do come standard they come with integrated turn signals as well and they are actually power folding to go along with all that then taking a look down at the wheel setup there will be a different wheel configuration depending upon the trim level that you go with so for the xle you get 19 inch machine finished two-tone alloys then for the limited you get 21 inch gray metallic alloys so that's what you guys are looking at right there but again with the side skirts and the fender surrounds they're going to be finished in a gloss black to match the front lip not a matte black that you traditionally find on all other suvs but rather a gloss black so i like that but 
That pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper. You have LED taillights coming standard at both trim levels as well with a nice little design to them. Very sharp looking taillight design, I like that. Got the crown lettering spelled out horizontally, of course. That's what a lot of luxury automakers are doing these days and it definitely looks good as well. In case you were curious about what that badging says on the left hand side of the tailgate the hev that stands for hybrid electric vehicle that is what toyota has been doing on their hybrids lately so in case you're curious about that and then just below it all there are dual exhaust outlets however they are tucked away in typical hybrid fashion i suppose but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the crown segment, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a hands-free power tailgate for both trim levels of this one, so you got to love that. So there is a button on the key fob as well, and there is a rubberized button on the back as well, so it's going to automatically then open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 25.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 68.8 cubic feet. That's pretty good. There were actually levers found in the cargo area to fold those rear seats down very easily, so I like that too. But anyways, LED cargo lighting does come standard back there. You got a cargo cover as well. There's some tie-down anchors. There are grocery bag hooks. And I think the thing that impressed me the most in the cargo area was how incredibly soft the bottom of the cargo area actually was. It was like felt or something. It was the smoothest, softest kind of cargo area I think I've ever experienced. More so even than the velour carpeting found in BMW and Mercedes. It was super soft. So for whatever reason, yeah, they put a lot of effort into that. I liked it. But then lifting up underneath of that cargo floor, you're going to find some fix-a-flat tools as well as a little bit of uh, in-floor storage for possibly an ice scraper. It looked like that would fit that perfectly. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 37.1 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the second row there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. You got some rear ventilation as well. Dual rear USB charging ports also coming standard, but you know what else comes standard? Heated rear seats. That's pretty stinking cool as well. That usually doesn't come standard, of course, but then making our way up to the front seats, eight-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar. You get memory settings for up to two different drivers. That's found on the driver's side door here. Leather seating is also going to come standard and you got heated and ventilated seats up here as well, coming standard for both trim levels as well. So that's pretty cool. It's found just to the left of the climate control information there. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's one of the first things I noticed. Typically Lexus and Toyota crush it with seat comfort and that's definitely the case with the crown signia very comfortable seats in this one but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped but it is also heated for both trim levels as well so that's going to keep you nice and warm and toasty in these cold western maryland mornings like today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your toyota crown lettering on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock and the button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the center air vents and so once started up as far as the gauge cluster goes it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster for both trim levels and it looks pretty darn good there is a slight bit of customization as far as the colors go when you change the drive modes but overall it's just a pretty good looking gauge cluster wouldn't have minded a little more customization as far as loadouts go and things like that but it looks good nonetheless you got your outside temperature digital speedometer time of the day pretty much everything you could possibly want on a gauge cluster but so now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic glass roof does come standard for the limited trim level only led interior lighting comes standard for both trim levels though auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls to up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror that comes standard for both trim levels the digital rear view mirror though 
that's going to come standard on the limited that's what i was mentioning to you guys earlier that's such a cool look i love that but wireless phone charger actually does come standard for both trim levels it's located just in front of the shifter there dual zoom climb control also both trim levels just to the right of that shifter you have a couple cup holders couple usb charging ports within the center armrest then it's an okay amount of storage you actually have a 12 volt power outlet and a usb charging port within there as well I like the uh, bronze-ish looking hand, the door handles on the inside here. I think that looks pretty darn good. Like the bronze accents or almost copper accents found in the seats to go along with that, as well as just underneath the infotainment screen. A little pop of color definitely works in this one. I like all the gloss black finishes surrounding the shifter. I think that also looks good. Overall, I don't think I have any issues with the interior quality. Maybe there's some things I would probably change, like the speaker covers, these JBL speaker covers. They're finished in matte black plastic just behind the doors. Matte black plastic again, but those are probably the two things that I would change. But other than that, everything looks perfectly fine. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. You got a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display coming standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming with that. Android Auto Apple CarPlay, but it's wireless. Android Auto Apple CarPlay, so you gotta love that. You can check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to, along with your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them, dependent upon the trim level yet again. If you go with the XLE, you're gonna get a six speaker sound system. If you go with the limited that we have today, you're gonna get an 11 speaker JBL sound system with a subwoofer. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> actually really good i don't mind that that was a really good sound system i had a jbl subwoofer in my first ever car I put it in the trunk back in the day and uh it was bumping man but yeah jbl is a very reputable company that's been around for decades now so absolutely nothing wrong with that sound system but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least so when you do put the crown signia in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board you got that 360 degree monitor there to the left as well that by the way that's an option for the limited trim that we have with us here today so you also got the rear camera mirror so i told you guys about that as well but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so typically the first thing i mentioned is the iihs rating however this one being as new as it is it hasn't yet been rated by iihs with toyota's reputation it's probably going to be a top safety pick if not as top safety pick plus but again Hasn't yet been rated. Do your own research there, but front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 because every manufacturer names their safety suite these days. You get a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, proactive drive Driving assist and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Crown Signia, it is a less expensive Lexus hybrid. So think of it that way. That's the way I think of it, at least. If you wanted to save some money, you wanted most of the luxury that you get with the Lexus and the same MPGs as the NX350 hybrid, let's say. This is definitely a solid option with Toyota's legendary reliability, legendary hybrid reliability. You get great MPGs, of course, right around 40 miles per gallon in the city and the highway, so you gotta love that as well. Weird thing is, I, one thing I would change is I would definitely put some rear privacy glass on this thing, Toyota, if you're watching this video, because it just looks a little different. It looks odd without it. Most SUVs, if not all SUVs, and even wagons have it these days. So I don't know, I'd, I'd probably just add it. The other thing is, I think I would love to see some ambient lighting in this thing. I think that would look pretty darn good as well. Multicolor ambient lighting specifically to really let the driver personalize it and make this one their own on the inside. So Mercedes-Benz has it, BMW has it. This Thing is over fifty thousand dollars i think ambient lighting would be pretty stinking cold but anyways that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold